One set. Camera rolling. Sound. The good, the bad, and the just plain standard. Take one. Salut. Hi. All right. Welcome back to the good, the bad, and a just plain standard podcast, where we provide you with our informed opinions on movies we watched together. We are your hosts, Adam, Anouk, and Jan. Today is rather special for two reasons. Firstly, because it's focused on theatre, and more specifically, our Edinburgh Festival Fringe experience. Secondly, because we have a guest in the house. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, good sir. Who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, my name is Alistair Duncan. I'm a full-time student at ACS, uh, Acting Coach Scotland, with Mark Westbrook and Nick J. Field. And uh, I guess I'm here because you got me out of bed this morning, Dan. <laughs> so so Jan's been rustling up guests left, right and centre at the Fringe. Oh, yeah. I do like that in that introduction, we either lost half of our viewership and gained another half. It's like, <laughs> everyone that just watches movies is like, okay, all right, not for me. <laughs> but then again, everyone that's like, Fringe like, ooh, this is interesting. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you know anything about the Fringe, this will be an eye-opener. Yes, or if you've been to the Fringe and performed in it, this will be a... Very. An incredible experience. Yes, an incredible Absolutely. experience. Well, before we start talking of our individual experiences <laughs> at, at said Fringe, I'd like to explain to our audience what the festival is, the Edinburgh uh, <laughs> Festival Fringe. Edinburgh, so, yes. Edinburgh. <laughs> uh, I got you here. <laughs> it all started with Greyfriars Bobby. Bri- all right, okay. Yes, ah, yes 100 yes. years. It's basically kind of his uh, anniversary. It is celebrated every year now on the Royal Mile. There is John Knox, the uh, boss of the Church of Scotland, that does a, there is a little vial of blood that only becomes liquid again during August. That's Greyfriars Bobby blood. And it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, that's, that's, that's amazing. I did not know. They that. didn't put that in the animated short for Grace Fires Bobby. <laughs> that yeah, would be they, a very different movie for kids, man. Wow. That's how it all started, and that's also um, <laughs> complete bull. That's not true. People just. <laughs> <laughs> you had me going there. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. I'm, I'm sitting there going, "Hang about. Wait a minute. <laughs> no." Uh, no, it's just a group of artists like 70 years ago because it was the 70th uh, edition, right? And they were yeah. denied entry to the normal festival that goes on at the same time, the International Festival. The International mm-hmm. Arts. And they yeah. went rogue and they did their own thing and now it's one of the biggest festivals in the world. I'm pretty sure it is the biggest arts festival. Well, this is the biggest. Beat artists, uh, yeah. There's on a the... series of fringes around the world, isn't there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It started the flagship. With that. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, really? I didn't even know that. That would make sense. I mean, how big? Think how big the fringes. Like other countries for arts would want to get in on that. I oh, can imagine London, that. Yeah. yeah. They started it in uh, '47, and we actually, well, the second uh, biggest one is the in France, in oh. uh, yeah Avignon. And it's, oh, it's Avignon is beautiful. It's funny because it's also like dual thingy. So there's the normal Festival d'Avignon and the off, like kind of the French. Ah, okay. French, yeah, 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 which is bigger also. Oh, That's really? Next French podcast. I know. I was like, yes, yes. trip to France. Let's get a trip to France. Oh my God! Can you imagine? My play is playing. I'm performing at the Avignon Fringe Festival this year. <laughs> I mean, I just like the idea of doing the podcast just to get to South by Southwest in Austin. The massive like, festival. I'm like, yeah, this is the whole yeah. reason we started it. Let's get, let's get a Are you guys support. hiring? Because I want to get in on that. That's sure. Good. For well, sure. I'll bring Alistair back for all so our friends. Southwest, Southwest. Let's do it. Oh yeah. We could take the instruments, mate. <laughs> we'll do a whole. We'll do a whole country Scots, music theme. We'll do a Scotland meets America style Texas. No, what would it be? Scottish country music meets like hoedown. Pan African electro stuff. <laughs> you guys talking to Americans and them trying to understand you will be interesting. All right, pal. Well, I know. Play a wee bit. I did it. Ready? Eh? <laughs> See, pal. I want a mustache blue. Eh? <laughs> I guess uh, a one, two, three, four. Yeah, 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 dude. <laughs> The main difference between the standard one and the fringe one is that, well, all the big shows are subsidized in the international, the big, the, the, the normal one, but you have to work your ass off in the fringe one to actually make it. Yeah. Like every, you can, you could have some, uh, uh, well, some, uh, some money, like if you're sponsored or some things, but still, you still have to. Oh, flyering it. was yeah. flyering. I actually really enjoyed the flyering part of it. It was quite a nice way to just sort of engage with people and 
get a feel for the energy that was going on during the fringe. Mm. It was also my vocal warm up <laughs> every day. <laughs> nice. That's a good yeah. Idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Rule one for the actor surviving podcast is be good at flying. Or if you're not good at flying, just em- at least be loud. Embrace <laughs> the, yes. Embrace that you will have to fly and you will be flyered. Yeah, just yeah. go for it. You know? Just go Commitment, for it. Commitment, confidence, it's all and about just, being... Honestly, just take the piece of paper. Even if you're not going to go and see it, like, just take it. Because You'll make our day. <laughs> you make, you, the, if you, the person gets confident with you taking the flyer. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, great. Yeah. And even if they don't, you know, just uh, self-deprecating one-liners usually got people to... To take them. <laughs> so I'd be standing there in the, in the rain and I'd just be yelling things like please don't take a flyer I'm having way too much fun I love to be cold and wet and sure enough like all the flyers in my hand would just disappear because people just want to prove you wrong nice it's true Fantastic. that's such a human nice. thing to yeah that's nice or my other favourite was um, oh what did I say I dropped out of uni for this. <laughs> Help me make my parents proud. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one went down a storm. Oh, that'd be uh, good. That's my very life. good. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah, I also think flyering before your show is a good idea because mm. flyering afterwards is a bit difficult. Well, I don't know last year how the flyering went on our side because I, I don't know. We, we didn't have. Huge houses. I know you guys had uh, good houses this year. Yeah, our, our sales were good. Um, they were fairly consistent. I mean, we were we were really busy right off the bat. A lot busier than we expected to be. Or at least I expected us to be. And it stayed fairly consistent. For Walls and Bridges, we had a couple of pretty quiet days. But, you know, really proud of the whole cast. We all just didn't mind. And we were there for the love of the craft and just mm. went for it anyway. You've got to be in that mindset to definitely just embrace who's going to be there. Oh, absolutely. Because on the opposite yeah. side, uh, we may have mentioned before on the podcast that um, me and Uke and Jan are all actors, and so is Alistair. In fact, Alistair is on the next year of the course that we did, so this is an even more connected podcast. There's so many levels. <laughs> yeah. it's, like a, it's like a viewpoint <laughs> lesson here. Right. And also, because we were on the first year... It's just hard work. Very... Hardcore networking right now. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, it's all going on. There are so many deals going on here. There's more deals going on here than a Wall Street, man. Got to make those deals. I've shaken so many hands under this table, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, so we... In the first year, we did three shows at the Fringe. ACS did mm-hmm. three. In rotation. They, in rotation. We did Troika, Leftover, and Change. And all, all three of us were in Troika and Leftover. And... Because of the time they were on, they were on at, was it 11.20 and 2.20 our shows were on? It was about then. I might actually say here. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, 11.40 and 12.40, actually. Okay. So, ideally for flyering, you would have to be in at 8, flyering 8 till 10, people, like, getting up and going. But... Also, we weren't staying in Edinburgh, so... No. We were coming through from Glasgow to Edinburgh on the morning coach, um... And so we would have had to leave Glasgow like at the crack of dawn. Yes. It would have been silly. Um, so the, the flying system for our show was that the other show, so if we were doing Troika first, Leftover second, the people that were in Leftover or essentially changed because Troika would, the whole cast of Troika would be performing, would have to go out and fly our Leftover. And then if it was a change day or a Leftover day first... If it was leftover first, we couldn't fly the second show because we were all in leftover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So on those days, the show after, which was usually would be change, mm-hmm. that would have to rely on fringe brochures or walkouts. So I think the second thing you need to be aware of if doing the fringe is that a flying is majorly important, but booking a time slot appropriate for your show. Mm. Or bearing in mind when your show is on and flying appropriately is, is is equal to just being out there handing them out. Right, and you know? we do we do understand that, that it's money. Like I do know that uh, evening slots can be a lot more expensive. So um, that was definitely a factor last year. Like obviously, when you're going to the Fringe Festival, you've got your little show. Most people don't break even at all. Not rarely, rarely, at, or even make any profit. So you don't do it for profit. You do it for exposure, experience. You think at least love for what you do. Well, location was also probably a, yeah. We were a bit, much better this year. We were yeah, much we further out. Yeah. So ideally, for Edinburgh, you want to be near the Royal Mile or as close as possible to Royal Mile because that's where everyone goes. That's the main tourist route because it's the Edinburgh Castle is right on that same road at the very mm-hmm. top you know yes right and that's 
if you walk up the Royal Mile, you won't get up that road without having at least ten flyers, I think. Yeah, it's true. And you went pretty big on the social media. Uh, Instagram was a thing. We yeah, yeah the, um, yes, one, was... of, one of our casts for Walls and Bridges, uh, Rory, he, he took charge of that. And uh, yeah, Instagram was a, a pretty cool way of marketing. I mean, I don't, I'm not very good with any of that stuff. So it was just interesting to kind of watch how much energy Rory would put into it. And that boy can flyer as well. Like, he really <laughs> engaged with just people in the street. Mm. And he was just so, his excitement was quite inspiring for all of us to watch. Like, and he was always pushing the numbers and he's always coming up with strategies mm. when things didn't work properly. And he's like, right, well, let's try and do that. He was a solutions, not problems kind of guy. Nice. And, That's um, a good idea. Yeah, so that was that was really, really awesome to learn about that side of it. Because I, I mean, I've done flyering for bars and things before then, but I know it's different when it's something you care about. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And you know, you've put your heart and soul into it, and you're just, I just want you to come along. If yeah. it was free and I could do it all for free, I would have done it for free. But mm. I don't know. People don't always go for things that are free because they're like, well, it must be rubbish. <laughs> or something right. like that yeah, I saw a couple yeah. of three things makes this year. sense makes sense it's a total difference because I know to do a to get a paid venue like the space which both of us were in the Space UK venues which are mm-hmm. very good venues of anyone from the space fantastic is fantastic crews yeah, so absolutely. helpful as well amazing uh, three venues cost usually about £50 a day rent so these basements and bars all of that's about 50 quid. Mm-hmm. so they have to make £50 that day to break even whereas mm-hmm. a venued place is about if you want to do three weeks it's between six to ten grand depending on how many shows you're doing you know you're paying per day so you got to that's why flying is such a big thing because you're going to make you know you're not going to break even but you want to make something you don't want to make a massive loss yeah absolutely yeah it bums on seats totally mm. i always thought the best thing for a, like a flying would have because obviously as technology evolves like marketing through instagram I reckon there's going to be an app, and it's because I've said this, it's public domain, so I can't make it, but oh well. Um, <laughs> the Fringe app should have a setting that you can fly or digitally. Shows near me, kind of thing. Shows near me, or it's like it's like air airdrop. So if you walk past somebody that's flying that has their, they've got a, they've got a separate thing that drops the flyer on you, mm. and it just appears on your screen. It pops up and goes, "There's a flyer." That'd event. be pretty cool. Oh, actually. kind of what the wallet does. Like when you're um, going to a cinema event or like it geographical, you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the location, it reminds you hmm. of the. That's a, yeah, that's something. I could have done that, but. Oh, God, <laughs> uh, damn so, it! Next well, time, giving next away my secrets. I'm already here. taking notes. So, um, yes. <laughs> notes we'll, for next year. We'll have a few reviews in in this show, <laughs> um, and for that, I'd like to talk about two concepts. Uh, that will be useful later on. Stagecraft. There are different types of uh, performing spaces. So I'd like us to talk about that. The proscenium march, the thrust and the traverse. So can you say something about those uh, differences performing there? Or um, I mean, a lot of what we've been doing, so things like cheating, and has always been to a front-facing audience in our studies up until now. So having that third sorry, those two extra directions that we have to be aware of was initially just mind-boggling. Mm. Like, yeah, we were the same. everything we were prepared for initially was just, oh, it was, I was lost. Because I was like, wait, do I, do, I, do I face this way? Or I know she's behind me now, but should I keep talking to her? <laughs> right. <laughs> just didn't know, where, yes. didn't know where to go. But it gets to a point, though, when you keep doing it. So one of the first things we did is we actually... Um, we actually taped out the space and the measurements mm. yeah. from there. And then we just set the chairs out. And our group, when we weren't doing a scene, we would sit spread out and be like, well, I, can, I couldn't see anything. But, you know, sometimes for those scenes, it's just the way it goes. Yeah. Um, I actually think, you know, having the three sides probably improved our stagecraft generally. Because you're more aware of everything that's going yeah. on. And even if it is, you know, the audience is only on one side, you are more aware of that there is an audience, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes in rehearsal, if you don't have that constant reminder that an audience needs to see, or the audience will be there, like you can mm-hmm. talk to them and stuff. Like, yeah, it's it makes you a lot more aware of 
what the end result might be. It keeps you moving as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think... Um, Which was interesting, yeah. It's good to stay dynamic in a scene. It was nice having them actually right at the edge of the stage. Right. Yes. I thought that might be quite mm-hmm. daunting, but mm-hmm. actually, yes. I, I, I thought it would be as well, but <laughs> it, was quite, it was quite nice because you could get, you could get this atmosphere coming off right. of them and, and feel how it went. So, you know, if it's a very tense moment, I mean, you could hear a pin drop at points. Yeah. Or if, if like, a joke's crashed, um, they're in on the joke with you, mm. and that's a really nice experience. Right. So You feel like we're, you're at the bar with your mates. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. You know, nice big three-sided bar, bar and we're serving up one-liners. It's good. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's one I forgot in the list. The, um, in the round arena style, have you been, well, I know that I went to see a shitload of shows, but you guys haven't. Did you go, did I you went to a, I went to a fair few. Um, so being with the space, we got yeah. access to a lot of space shows. Uh, if they're still held tickets going. Yeah. So I got, to see, I got to see a fair few at our venue and a fair few in a few other places. Uh, I went to see Shitface Shakespeare. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh. Okay. Oh, I, oh, I just I don't even know where to start. Just, <laughs> That can't be good for the liver, but so funny, it's so funny. It works. Oh, it does work. Yeah. yeah. Scripted. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the majority of it is scripted okay, okay. for the not, not for that one guy. <laughs> 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 He's clearly like broad Scottish at one point. <laughs> it's just I couldn't understand him. Did you ever, in general, at the Fringe, manage to see in the round or traverse shows? Because that's fairly uncommon. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. It was a lot of thrust, a lot of a uh, lot of thrust stages. Um, there was a few places where it was just it was just projected out one way to the audience, but it was just like the back corner of a bar or something like that. Yeah, and actually, some of those were quite good. I found the serious ones weren't too like lecturery or anything. You know, you you gave a damn about the character's story, uh, which is what you want. You want to be drawn in, um, and. Other stuff's just like comedy, like stand-ups mm-hmm. and things like that. That's, the Fringe is very good for the comedy, I find. There's some really funny people out there. Yeah, yeah. Great sense of humour at the yeah. Fringe. <laughs> that are doing it for free. Like, they are, they must be work, you know, grinding, grinding. The, wa- the one thing I did see that wasn't Walls and Bridges, which is the show Alistair was in, which we didn't mention, um, <laughs> was uh, he was flyered. I was, I was with my dad. Uh, it was literally just, we were just seeing where about we could go and see a show. Because there are loads and they're just all starting. Because I, I think that's good for the free fringe as well. Because you get people just walking in because they're there and the show's about to start. It's like, come on, mm-hmm. we'll go and see what's on. Mm-hmm. So I saw, I can't remember his name, but he was, I will add link at the end of the episode to the guy's Twitter because I won't look him up. Because I feel he was good, so I want to give him a shout out, but I can't <laughs> remember his name. Um, this is a good start. He was, uh, <laughs> he, was new, he was Yorkshire's answer to Woody Allen. That was, his, that was what his tagline was. I'm and he was intrigued. <laughs> he was he was really good because it also showed me the th- his best bit. He, all his jokes were really like intellectual. Like the re- he he made this thing about you're either good at writing jokes or you're good at performing jokes, and the other person wants to be good at the other one's skill. Right. So he did a, yeah. he did a joke about he was talking about how everyone died and all the celebrities died in 2016, and in that way it was good because there was a death for everyone. You know, mm-hmm. you weren't if, if, you, if you didn't care about somebody that just died, you, was, you were rest assured that somebody else was going to come along. Because uh, for him, it <laughs> like was a global year of mourning. Yeah, for him, it was uh, <laughs> Leonard Cohen. Uh, he, that was who he was. His big one that affected him. So it made him listen to a lot of Leonard Cohen. Listen to Leonard Cohen is not good for getting over the death of Leonard Cohen. No, <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's, it's good for sales, but he's like, it kind of makes me excited for when the Venga boys go because then we're going to listen to all three of their hits <laughs> when they die in some Venga bus accident. <laughs> oh my God. Venga bus, wow. So that was his sort of style, but he managed to hand, his best bit was when um, he had walk-ins come in halfway through the show. and uh, Oh, just heckles? Not really heckles, right? They just sat, they stood at the back and he just looked at them and he just went, uh, yeah, you taking your coat off? You staying? And uh, I like, oh, I'm still on probation. And uh, eventually, when he, when they decide, they just walked out. It's like, no, sorry. And he's just like, oh well, it's going to be better without those rabble rousers at the back <laughs> there. <laughs> but the thing was, they Amazing. they were like a bunch of bingo users. Like it was, it was a group of older men and women. And the thing was, he was very subtle, so it wasn't like you were laughing your head off. But when he made a subtle and really good joke, it was good. So again, I really enjoyed that guy. I will find him and I will 
put a link to him because he was very <laughs> good. Out. He was very good. Yeah. Very yeah. professional. That's a recorded now. Now you have to do it. I will right. do it now. <laughs> it was, yeah, it Jan, was, cut that bit out. It was. It wasn't. A, <laughs> cut that review uh, out for time. Household name. It, it wasn't a household name. You just discovered. No, it was. A, so he'd been going um, a good for years. He's been on like Radio Two and Radio Four doing uh, comedies and panel shows, but he's never been on television. That was the other joke as well. He did is like you know when you come to the fringe and you're aspiring. He's like as you're telling yourself you're happy with your life when you see death. He's like I, I never I, I never wanted to be on television anyway. <laughs> That sort of stuff. So very self-aware of himself. Very funny. I enjoyed him. Because I went to see Household Names because, well, they were Household Names. And it was uh, an in the round uh, for once. It was called mm. A Joke with Robert Picardo. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, well, Sylvester McCoy was the biggest name. Oh. And the third one. Well, I don't... There it's a, a Scotsman, an Irishman, and an Englishman uh, walk into a uh, joke. Right. It was in the round, and oh, it was I think very, I saw a poster for that. very well, uh, very well designed. That sounds I, th- I think the only problem that I had with the fringe was there was just too much. That is, yeah. And I'm, I'm sad I didn't get to see enough. I mean, when you get the brochure comes out for the fringe, like it only comes out about three months early, which I don't think is enough. They should put it out in like April, although mm. it is, it's mm. the registering and the printing. But it's like a phone book. Okay. Yeah, it's Young huge. Listener, <laughs> younger listeners will not know what a phone book is, but a phone book. <laughs> Imagine it's that imagine, thing you use to prop up the TV, right? Imagine if all exactly. your Facebook friends, all like a hundred thousands of them, because you know you have people on Facebook you don't even know, but you're friends with them, right? <laughs> imagine if all of them were put in a big book and it was their name and their phone number, and that's what the phone book was. It was just a list of everybody. <laughs> you would have to look them up, you know. Like when you Google, say, I don't know, if you looked up uh, John Smith, which is a very standard name. And you just went through all the John Smiths that are on Yeah, Facebook. then it's like Smith roulette You'll to make sure yeah. you phone the right sure one. That's the Smith. I remember those so days. So inst- instead of looking at the photo and going, that's my John Smith, you would have to phone up every John Smith and go, John, hello? <laughs> is this Maureen's John <laughs> Smith? Is this, a, is this, are you, no, are no, you my John? No, no, down the road. Down the road. See you later. Down the road. <laughs> and uh, Traverse. I went to see Trend Spotting Live oh. in oh, Traverse style of... Did you sit next to the bog? Uh, what the toilet? What the toilet? Yes, Sorry, the was, bog was, is something for Eng- I don't know English. I think, I think for, it's English. It's English. For I was very close to the yeah. Yes. Oh God. That's risky. Did they hand you like a cagoule, like <laughs> wellies, <laughs> just in case? Came with the like plastic ponchos oh, and. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, I would, ex- as you would expect, I understood probably like seventy percent of what was shouted, <laughs> but it was like so in your face that it really didn't matter. You felt yeah. the, the whole thing, and uh, it was helped by the fact that I knew what Ken meant and Bern, or I wouldn't have like understood more than Ken 50%. and Bern. <laughs> And it, what does Ken and Baron mean? Ken is like, no. I know. Not no as in no Sorry, K N O W. And. Yeah, Ken. 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 And what was the other one? It's not Barbie's uh, husband. Baron. Like child. Baby. Bobby. Ah. You're Baron. Right? You're Baron's grinding. I don't know. I've been here for two years, guys. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm learning. And yet you still can't out. understand my father. <laughs> not true there are some moments where uh. I'm like sorry <laughs> but that's because he's talking to you so yes, he doesn't need me right. to understand um, a second concept before we delve into your shows uh, the, the jelly bean concept yeah. so oh, can we yeah. talk about that Anit do you want to explain the jelly bean concept I would love to be brought up to speed on the jelly bean concept <laughs> Do you not know the jelly bean concept? No, no. Oh, so he hasn't really? brought up the jelly bean concept? Westbrook will bring ignorant. this up. That's strange. So, okay. um, this is where, this watching... where I find out he's actually taught us and I just <laughs> didn't <laughs> listen that day. You're like, wait a minute, what am I thinking? <laughs> That's me, I've just buried myself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that one out. I'll mention that to him when he comes on. <laughs> <laughs> jelly beans, I'll be anyone? In the way. Is he coming in the <laughs> store? <laughs> gotcha. And bring in Westbrook. <laughs> that uh, was a prime example of the jelly bean thing. We set up that Mark would come through at the very start of the episode, and then if Mark came in, that would be the jelly bean. Right. So it's it's sort of like a story structure in any theatre or film production um, where you give the audience little tidbits throughout oh, until like it builds fairy, up. Fairy tale. Yeah, Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. Like okay. Right. Breadcrumbs. Has he talked about breadcrumbs? I I. I, I 
I know what we're talking about now. <laughs> in, Mark, <laughs> in Mark's way, the jelly bean concept is that you don't want to ha- you don't give the audience the whole bag of jelly beans because they'll get sick of it. You give them one at a time that you keep them right. interested. You want, they want another one. So you, right, right. there you go. I'd prefer jelly beans to breadcrumbs any day as well. <laughs> because also, the, I think there's a point in that as well that like jelly beans are yummy in each one, <laughs> but they're a little bit moreish. So you kind of want more, but they you're kind of enjoying. It, it can't be breadcrumbs because that's a little bit like breadcrumbs is I'm because bored you've now. got a flaky loaf and you're freezing for the audio for, for the audio podcast yeah. I'm now shaking a bre- loaf of bread I'm miming shaking a loaf of bread he's not actually shaking a loaf of bread I yeah. realised too late that there's no video on this no there was so not so me going doesn't do anything no it doesn't it looks hilarious imagine if you will Yes. A bearded fellow shaking, <laughs> pretending to shake a loaf of bread. There you go. That would be... Why? What? what With was... full commitment as well. Full that was a good shake. Well. Yeah. well, that's what happens at ACS. You, you learn to be committed. <laughs> <laughs> Confident and committed. Yes. That's, that's what we all are. It's the daily note. Okay, <laughs> so we can talk about the shows now. We'll start with uh, Walls and Bridges. The the one with the the, the, the biggest uh, presence of jelly beans is Edgartown, but still, Walls and Bridges, oh. you had the biggest uh, prominent role the in there. Brig- so. uh, biggest presence of lack of stage lights. Um, oh, <laughs> yes. So one of the fun things that, that, that we'd agreed on was to do like all our lighting tech ourselves. So as if it's underground, as if there's like no power to the area. So it being set in like a dystopian version of Scotland, we were trying to work on that so that it would bring in this atmosphere and this tenseness and make it much more intimate. I mean, the whole idea with walls and bridges is like we, we've got walls coming up everywhere and the metaphorical bridges, I guess, are the relationships between the two characters at any one time. So, I mean, the Ian and Frankie bit, that was just them trying to build bridges to each other, regardless of everything that's keeping them apart. So Frankie's can't go and see her kids, but it's stopping her pursuing this love interest with Ian. And it's them just trying to fight to climb over the walls and build a bridge together. And I've used that metaphor like six times in that explanation. <laughs> it's, good, it's good when your metaphor is the name of the play. Yeah. yeah. And that's totally connecting. acceptable. To yeah. It's good to, just as long as it's not a simile. It's all right. <laughs> oh. It was like a wall, or, uh, like a bridge. <laughs> so did you, did you use uh, heavily the political aspect in the flyering? And stuff? Um, I didn't really. Uh, with flyering, um, I mean, we got nominated for the Amnesty International Freedom of Expression Award. Woohoo! Thank Ooh, you very much. Um, awesome. I have no idea if we've gone any further with that. Um, it was a really, really nice gesture from Amnesty International. Uh, but I would, I would mercilessly use that to flyer. <laughs> of course you would. It's totally... Yeah. It's well, totally and then incredible. self-deprecate immediately afterwards and just tell them, like, they don't care, I don't care, just come because I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> so something but, like... We nominate for an Amnesty Award. Fuck it, just see it anyway. I uh, essentially, but you know, we 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 did we were quite proud to to get that award. Well, to get the nomination. I mean, it says it's it says nice a lot. To be nominated. Yeah, I mean, I'll take that. There's no small and it parts. It looks great on the. Oh, it made the flyers look more interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks, yeah, definitely. It looks great. Yeah, it does. Yeah, no. Um, did you go see any political shows? Um, that uh, not not especially. I mean. I think bringing politics into theatre is a tough one to do yeah. without it getting sort of lectury, because politics is is many different viewpoints, and with theatre you can only really show one or two without taking in the other side, because characters have to have a side. Now, like a good political theatre piece would have, you know, where the conflict happens between both sides of an argument. Mm. But I went to I went to a couple. Can't remember their name because I was not not enjoying it that much but they were very very like you know down one party line one sided yeah yeah you, mm. i mean you got to you've got to be able to play devil's advocate if you're going to do a political political piece i as, think as a writer um i've often thought doing something not even political but just like when you write something that you have an idea about i always think it's nice to write something about the opposite side of what you feel mm-hmm. because you can emphasize your point it's really kind of boring for somebody to hear your opinion over and over again exactly so in a play say if it was we'll take trump for example say if you were a an anti-trump supporter 
my idea for a writing piece would be write a piece of theatre that's about people being excited that Trump's in and then you can show if you show their beliefs people that don't believe in that and go but that's so wrong and it starts a conversation because the the difficulty with politics is that nowadays you can just find a fact for anything you can back yourself up no matter on whatever point it is I mean, I'm pretty sure you log into Wikipedia write your yeah. own facts people believe that the earth is, people <laughs> believe yeah. the earth's still flat and they're like secure in that so if, I should have done flat earth. apparently that's growing again it isn't yeah, yeah, yeah. it's growing it's, but, it's insane but do you mean like it isn't <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes right. Jan Sigma is the head of uh, the, the world's flat Jan, Jan The flatters. Jan Sigma, the man that was in the French Navy, does not know that they are <laughs> right. Well, I only no went... wonder, he went to Hawaii, man. How is that? It's just like oh. sail flat on the... Oh, Jesus. Only was there for 12 years, you know, it's not enough to... So, for example... Yeah, he didn't, he didn't if it. you believe that the Earth is round, <laughs> make a play about the Earth being flat, because you'll point out more things in yourself for the Earth being round than the other way, you know? Well, yeah. Make That's, it interesting. This is why people do parodies, because it's so much easier to yeah, make true. fun of something that you don't believe rather than saying what you believe in, then it, it sounds like an attack or like a... I mean, that's that's why um, In the Thick of It Works, the political comedy by uh, Amanda Nucci, like, that's so real so, that it's so, so funny. Peter Capaldi. And Peter oh. Capaldi mm-hmm. is the Malcolm, Malcolm yeah. Fucker, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know? Oh, you could be watching the news. <laughs> like, it's, it's so good because you believe that it's a real thing. That's what I mean. It's like, make it believable and make... I, and if you want to spice it up, make it about something you don't necessarily believe in. And well, then you can kind of make your point in that way too. It's a perfect transition to what I was trying to go with. Uh, I went to You're see uh, Bin Laden, a one-man show. Oh, wow. That sounds thrilling. That's yeah, so... Uh, wow. Tell me more. <laughs> it's, well, actually, I let... Uh, Did it involve tea towels? Or puppets? <laughs> it involved tea yeah, Gee. but I'll, I'll uh, let uh, the two guys involved uh, talk about that now. So we're in Naive Theatre. Uh, my name's Sam Redway and this is Tyrrell Jones. Uh, and together we're Naive Theatre and we've co-written the Bin Laden, the One Man Show. I am Bin Laden and Tyrrell directed. It is the one man, it's the story of Bin Laden told by one man. He sits you down, makes you a cup of tea and blows your mind. And it's, uh, the twist is that, of course, Bin Laden is played by a white, blonde guy. He's really charming in English. So the audience have totally different judgments uh, when listening to his story than they might if he was, had a massive beard and a turban and so on. Um, so we tell Bin Laden's story from his perspective. Wow. <laughs> Jesus, that's interesting. That's I actually really like the sound of that. That sounded really good. And it's interesting because even the most uh, forward-thinking person will have prejudices against certain yeah, it's people. Challenging it's challenging your just preconceptions. Completely. So if someone who is, as he said, white, male, blonde, charming, is talking about something, you might actually probably listen than if someone's, you know, yelling yes. it in, in very harsh Arabic. They took the viewpoint, uh, not related, they took the viewpoint <laughs> of... Uh, uh, viewpoint, <laughs> another... Bin Laden's podcast. life and his journey to change the world. And it's funny at times, moving at other times, scary here, there. And it incites debates, which is usually, usually happens after the show between uh, Sam, Tyrell and the audience members who were uh, patient enough to stay until, uh, well, to go have some chat at the bar. <laughs> they had some pretty good houses. Like, uh, it's a show that was created like in 2013, and they toured in the US and loads of places with it. And it was, it, it came back for uh, for the fringe. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, that's what you want with good theatre. It should ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, it doesn't, sure. it doesn't necessarily have to ask questions of. It works in the same way for our podcast name, the good, the bad, and the just plain standard. I mean. There's nothing wrong with a bad film. A bad film is usually a bad film it's is got made me through with, many of a hangover. Is made with heart. It's just not. <laughs> there's just something that doesn't work. But the worst sin of them all is just standard. That boring. It's nothing happens. It's the same with theater. Like bad theater is made by a, a combination of, of things that don't work. But usually bad theater tries to do something. That's why it falls down because it tries either too hard or 
they go for one thing and they lose in other aspects. But when theatre doesn't try to do anything at all, that's like, why am I watching this? Mm. Right, and you, you can know? watch something through anger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they watch something and be so angry at what they're doing and they, it stirs something in you and you never... that's kind of okay. Like, even if you're losing mm. what they wanted you to kind of leave with. You never, you, walk are... out, yeah. you never walk out of a bad play. You always walk out of a standard one. Like, for example, the, the what was it, the... Crucible that we saw. Do not make me hit the table. Yes. Ex- oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> that play was a joke. I'm sorry if anyone was in it. Like, but you're. Yeah. That it was. Uh, it was so standard. It's like oh. we're doing the Crucible. We could either make it interesting <laughs> sorry, and bold, so or just angry. standard and sell tickets for twenty two fifty. Twenty two fifty. Wait, we saw we oh. saw this restless <laughs> house. Okay. We saw exactly. this restless house, which is four and a half hours. It was a tenor, and it was amazing. Yeah, that I'm was actually going to go see that soon. That was the preview. Are you? Yes. Go. Great. Yes. Yes. And Great take stuff. everyone with you. It was fantastic. Yes. And it was four and a half hours long, yeah. but it felt like it was ten minutes. It was yeah. insanely well, good. Uh, 50 minutes. Uh, Do you like the so? Yeah. 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 Entrance in there. Like intermission. Yeah, there's a... Right, so right, right. right. But yes, like a... so I had, you know, a few glasses of wine. <laughs> but it was good. Well, grape theatre. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, Grapes, everything. Should we should we go back to talking about Walls and Bridges? Or are we just gonna oh, yes. Yeah, just <laughs> well, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, just one thing before, uh, the, the political uh, thingy. Those guys inspired me to write a uh, play about uh, Libya. Oh. Because, yeah, if you've been to last year's Leftover... And you probably didn't, well, except uh, us who performed in it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, uh, Leftover was one of the most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Leftover was one of the most attended that. shows we did last year. <laughs> we did Troika to one man and a dog. <laughs> that was fun. We did. I'm and not really joking. Did. And the guy was. That a, was the best day. Was a re- so that's for all the references from Mark and Nick about, like, you know, that man or the dog will be there, but. Uh, know, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was Crack because he, they literally had that last year. Yeah, that was a good time. But, um, no, but also, uh, Mark and Nick were like saying that it was good that you actually performed because loads of people would have been Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Like, even if it's one guy or a full mm. house, you know, make that or the no best one. 45 minutes. Well, even if it's no one, you know, just do it anyway and then yeah. you're going to be slicker the next day. We actually spoke about that before we went on stage, that if no one arrives, we'll do it anyway and we'll try and do it with as much gusto. Because you're there, you're at the fringe. Like, exactly. How many people yeah. can say yeah. they're doing two shows or even one show every single day, except for Sundays, uh, <laughs> for three weeks? Glorious <laughs> three weeks. Sunday. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sundays was the first day ever. But um, because, you know, as soon as it's over, um, you know, we had all these plans to like, oh, my play is going to be in next year. <laughs> this doesn't happen. It's not that easy. So is your, so, is your Libya play going to be next year, Jan? The thing is that I completely stopped with the Navy, I think it was last September. And there is this, um, I, I can't talk about stuff for two or three years. I don't remember kind of... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, stuff that I that I talked on stage last year anyway, but <laughs> you know, um, that's an admittance of guilt. That's amazing. <laughs> so the last time we saw you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the nick. Uh, <laughs> no, but I'm I'm writing a yeah Gaddafi uh, something. So yeah, amazing. Hmm. Walls amazing. and bridges. We didn't yes. say what it was about, did yeah. we? So we, walls and bridges follows the story of a group of creatives who are trying to make a documentary about what life is really like on the Scottish side of this wall that's gone up between England and Scotland. And without trying to give too much away, well, I suppose I can now, I mean, it's over. We might do it again next year. I'd like to anyway. Uh, so no, I'll keep, I'll keep a few spoilers. <laughs> it's, um, it's basically the story about how this group of creators is trying to get the word out about how life is really like and, you know, what we're looking at, you know, if we, if we keep going down this road that we're currently doing, what's it going to cost us? So we're trying to explore that and, you know, even though this cost will be incurred, are we still going to be able to find a way to come back together? So we had like a few verbatim pieces. So there's three, I'm gonna say one man scenes because I hate the word monologue. Uh, there's three <laughs> one man scenes. Um, and these are, all, these are all, you know, spoken word pieces from people who have actually lived in these 
pretty horrific parts of the world where there's a lot of oppression, there's a lot of, you know, things in their way. Fear. Yeah, exactly. And it's just seeing like their their spirit is indomitable. It's amazing. Uh, it, regardless of what's coming up against them, it's their their love for the fe- their fellow man. You know, that keeps them fighting, which has been. I mean, the research process that we went through to to come up with the script and the, de- the whole devising process was. It was emotionally quite raw at times. There was a lot of stories that we found. So they, actually, no, instead of the terrible ones, I'll, I'll say one of the good ones. So there's a section on the wall between the US and Mexico called Friendship Park. Now people can go down to this and meet family members on the other side. And, you know, it's just a bit of grating. And it, it's, it was such a touching story, but sadly that wall is getting bigger. And I think in like 1971, First Lady Nixon said she was hoping that this would be gone in 30 years, whereas it's only getting longer, which is very sad. I I mean, I'm paraphrasing massively, but that was a very touching story. I think what was, sorry. Go on, go on. Um, I think what was really nice about watching a play like that is because it's all in our minds somewhere. You know, this sort of fear because we, we are at a point where um, these awful people and these awful ways of thinking are it's kind of a norm now mm. you know like it's very o- it's very open like Ku Klux Klan members aren't wearing hoods anymore like they don't care about people knowing their identity and um, it was just nice to see it through uh, and also know that you know the world is so globalized now like we we can tell these stories mm-hmm. and we can tell it to people that you know might not know about these things and like that is so important and that's like the- a lot of people see theater and film as entertainment and then there's this where- which is like education and learning and growing and actually understanding that we're all human beings on this crazy planet it's yeah, just absolutely. um so that was nice i wouldn't say that like our play was there to provide answers i think we were there mm-hmm. to to ask questions um and I hope we achieved that to to some degree. I mean, we're, we're, we are entertainers, actors, and at the end of the day, that is what we do. Mm-hmm. But entertainment doesn't just have to be, you know, the jollies mm. or the or the tears. If it can get you thinking, you know, there's the sky's the limit with it. And I hope I hope we achieved that goal to some degree, because it certainly left me thinking about things differently. Oh yeah, definitely. With us, for sure. Well, I, I liked uh, the well the lighting design. Yeah, we, yeah, talked, no, we touched on very it earlier. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. So yeah. yeah, doing all our own lighting. Um, to be honest, like my I think my job because of my height was to go up and down the ladder like <laughs> eight or nine times one week with black bags and black card to try and black out the room. Yes. At, at Harmony Row. Right. Uh, <laughs> God, if I ever have to see black duct tape again, I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so blacking out the room and stuff, and then you know just working working the blocking with doing our own lighting, and then you know we had to. I think it's what made us quite dynamic, is because you know we'd have to make sure we were hitting the right spots so that mm-hmm. we'd hit we'd like get the light on each other because yeah. it's dark in that room. You know, it was good having these wee lights. And I, I, I don't know, from the audience perspective, I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, well, I've seen it three times. Yeah, it was uh, because <laughs> as we are, uh, we were in the same company, ACS, yeah, last yeah. year. I said to you, when I first met you on the Royal Mile, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, right, I'm going yeah. to see you guys um, three times. So first day to have a fresh thingy, yeah. then mid-run to see uh, how it was progressing, like to see your state of exhaustion we and judge you in silence. Deteriorating. <laughs> and the last day to see how it progressed and uh, confidence. It progressed clearly, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, you. F- it looked like you were more liberated uh, between, like yeah, it felt different. Slightly, I, I can't. I think that that's that's something that I've actually fallen in love with, theatre. Like doing the Fringe this year, it's just been such an incredible experience. And I mean, my interest was always like film and TV, mm-hmm. but 
Mm. After after this run, it was just it was different every day. I had the same it kind was of amazing. A lot of fun, yes. I had yeah. the same kind of experience last year. Yeah. Also, I was more focused on the screen. But wait, wait till you see Patrick. I, I'm looking forward. Yeah, to it. it might forward. change. It might change oh, your. Yeah. It might. It will come. Probably back. tell me to shave my beard, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they did tell me I was a chunky lad. <laughs> <laughs> Use it. Um, choreography. Cuddly, cuddly, if anything. Choreography. <laughs> I love the choreography. Oh, the movement piece at the yeah, start. Movement, yes, that we didn't succeed well. It, uh, Nick managed to get his, uh, uh, what he wanted. Yeah, no, yes. um, <laughs> so we've been, we've been blessed with having the this girl on the course, Chiara Pascali. She's half Italian, half Scottish, and she's a dancer. And that, like her cutting the music and doing the sound, the voice. So Kat, who is Frankie, Kat mm-hmm. Harrison. Yeah. She did the voiceover at the start, which sort of sets the base reality for it. And then Kiara actually mixed the music with the voiceover mm-hmm. down to a T. And then she choreographed that whole movement piece. More talented lastly, I don't think I've met. That's awesome. She's, she's a dark horse, a dark Italian stallion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just, just actually watching her grow as an actress and as a person over that whole experience was quite amazing as well. That must have been interesting to come to an acting course as a dancer, like starting off yeah, I, in a very different world. Cause I mean, I also dance and sing, but like I obviously like a majority of my stuff is acting, but like it's a very different world, like mm-hmm. completely, but it has its similarities. So that must have been yeah, an interesting absolutely. journey. I mean, she says, I, I think she's a grafter. And I think that comes from the dancing. Right. Yes. She works bloody hard right yeah right. and doesn't even phase her no like she enjoys it i think that actually reminds me of diana because she um diana silveda who's appearing, portuguese appearing in portuguese things near you yes she is a uh, tin man she did she'd done she's i think she's done that she's done the tin man in wizard of oz in portugal <laughs> To the, uh, shout out shout out to Portugal <laughs> yeah she was born there too so yeah yeah she's Portuguese um, but um, the wizard of she, Oz uh, <laughs> yes it's a really interesting check it out Judy Garland yeah um, we are not the prison TV series that stopped uh, not, not the same Oz alright no it's actually uh, just a bunch of Brazilian footballers speaking Portuguese <laughs> it's like Pele Pele is the tin man no but uh, <laughs> going to say that um she did a lot of circus all right uh, work and oh yeah yeah so she's very she's obviously very good at like if you're if you're not doing something well do it again and again and again and again until and it's again. and you know habitual. i think not everyone has that and especially at the start i found that really difficult like if someone is if something is my weakness i run away that's fair <laughs> i think that's fair i run away from it should we talk about Edgar Town? Because you were in both shows. You were the only one in both shows. Yeah, I mean, that was, that, that was nice. Um, I think I sort of shoehorned my way in there because uh, <laughs> I, I was talking to Mark about music, uh, the head coach at ACS, and um, I can't remember how it went, but I said I could play harmonica, and he was just like, are you any good? And I just happened to have a harmonica in my bag. Yay. So I brought it through, and I just played him a wee bit, and... He, and Classic Mark, he's just like, okay. <laughs> Gave away nothing. Gave away nothing. So I was like, well, I'm probably not going to get get involved. But it was just like, a, it was a fun wee cameo bit. I mean, Edgar Town's just a good laugh. It's got that dark comedy bit, which like is right up my street. And the <laughs> the songs and stuff were, <laughs> were very funny and also, you know, quite moving at points. So like Blood on the Water, they had Adam Ross Green. I mean, he did all the music and things for it. And wrote wrote all the parts. I just got to sort of piggyback on <laughs> on his talent more than anything, uh, which was a great great experience. Though I know it was it was fun doing two shows that were so different from each other. Mm. So yeah, I mean there is a, there are some very well. I think they're very funny parts in Walls and Bridges. I think that's mainly because I know I know the cast and they are my friends, but. Just seeing all these like in jokes worked into, you know, being actually quite funny on stage, was a real treat. And then just just getting to see both groups grow mm-hmm. as actors was phenomenal. Um, I've got to say, like I've, I've I've actually never seen 
both plays because of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Enjoyed like That's seated it, yeah. in the audience. Yeah. No, no, there's a riot though because, uh, like, I, you know, I had I started getting makeup and stuff for for the very short part I'm in Edgar Town, but there are no small parts, and I, I did enjoy I did enjoy my part with it. I felt more like I was a, a hindrance initially because I was like. I hadn't done that much rehearsal with them. So like the blocking for me, I was kind of like, uh, should I crab walk to the left a little bit? Like, where, where, where do you need me to sit? And eventually, well, I mean, we got it. We got it for the first day. And then, uh, yeah, it's just fun to get to do that every day. Playing harmonica is a good vocal warm up. ACS was very good at that. This is becoming a podcast about ACS and how amazing it is, but um, it is amazing <laughs> because um, everyone's strengths and weaknesses are so different and they're not kind of broken down and you're made into like the same person like everyone can like bring in their own stimulus like adam mm -hmm. does the music kira's a, a dancer like you know all these things are like brought in uh, it was actually um for edgar town it was gwen gwen harkis who she did the choreography for the dance to best of my knowledge i wasn't there for it yeah amazing yeah but that's on the on so the many it's, yes uh, yeah, yeah. so many different walks of life coming in Mm. And you know, it's it's just funny to see like people working together to to make something where everyone has a part. And the costume design I thought for Edgar Town was Steam fantastic. Yes. Um, that's yes. Holly, um, Holly Purvis. Oh, yes. Amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. I mean, steampunks is just such a it's quaint in a way. Yeah, mm. it's quite a strange yeah. uh, um, such style. A, yeah, bizarre style, which I think you know hats off to the guys in Edgar Town that it was a style that totally fits with the fringe because it has that sort of medieval festival yeah. style yeah yeah oh, this is a musical and I loved it that's the second one. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> for baby just, for, yeah. Oh, you hate musicals don't you yeah uh, yeah Look at uh, that. I don't <laughs> I, subtext I yes. despise with a passion <laughs> <laughs> no that in Edgar Town the jelly bean like foreshadowing with wittingly placed twists Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was very, very well written. Very, uh, yeah. I did not very. see it coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely uh, there's not. A lot of the jokes were fantastic. Like, oh, I, I a lot, of, a lot of the time backstage was just sort of like, ah, don't, don't, don't laugh, don't laugh. <laughs> so so funny. I definitely had tears in my eyes. <laughs> it was good, very good. So I think now is the moment where I'd like Ooh. us to talk about. Uh, reviews because the thing about the fringe is there are different types of uh, performers right so there's the students one so it's just an experience for them just like it was for us, us and, mm -hmm, but it's yeah. like uh, small names that are coming to make it big uh, like colin cloud is the uh, magician like last year he was in a standard size room this year it was at the um, courtyard grand what is it? Oh, amazing. Yeah, like gigantic, and it's in uh, America's Got Talent uh, a few days ago. So, yeah, you, you it's kind of, uh, and there uh, are awards also, so it's kind of uh, loads of uh, commercial. Well, so what, what I mean is reviews, um, people come to get four or five stars, and then it launches them into uh, selling tickets and stuff. So, you guys did the, well, Rory you said did the marketing, so I don't know if he, I don't think he, he, he read any, he used reviews and stuff for, the, for this. We as a company agreed not to read the reviews, and that's like your inner game sort of thing. Yeah, just, just during the run? During the run. To be honest, I, I know they're out there, but I haven't read any since no and oh, i mean we mm. did the same thing last year we decided not to read them but, but because you have no idea how you'll react because you it's very easy for you to say like i'm really strong i can take it da, 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 da. like you know mark and nick do it every friday like break mm. me down i can take it but it it's completely different because even funnily enough when i did read them after the run i got pretty depressed about it like mm -hmm. really sad about it um well it's what there's a david mamet quote isn't it it's just you know right the good ones are never good enough and the bad ones will devastate you yeah i think exactly. it's something like that and yeah. it stays yeah. with you and it's so silly because it's like it's just it doesn't need to be it's just you're training all the time mm -hmm. and of course reviews are important but maybe not when you're i sometimes think for the fringe that five star doesn't even matter anymore because everyone says that they're five stars like you can put 
on a flyer you could just say five stars and you could have made an account and written it yourself you know like it doesn't have the value of just seeing five stars on something i mm-hmm. honestly think the best review in a fringe is word of mouth if somebody comes back and says i saw this you should see it go see you're it. you're more likely to go and see it yeah I think. absolutely uh-huh. and i think twitter's good for that too because people can tweet out saying i enjoyed it and they can share it and <laughs> yeah but twitter is just like soundcloud it's dying so do you think twitter's dying no, it's, uh, SoundCloud, SoundCloud. soundcloud's back and kicking me yes yes they're, One, they're saved yeah 200 they're million saved. dollars yes has been saved until the next bailout yeah uh, um fingers crossed <laughs> this podcast will save soundcloud yes it will <laughs> yeah make soundcloud great again <laughs> No, get, I mean, there are get, different get sides to reviews, for some of, that money. of course. <laughs> no, I mean, reviews. If you, have you seen the movie Chef? Yes. Yes. I mean, um, it hurts. When you get something bad, it hurts. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Well, and it also has a double effect because we are actually... That's what we're doing here. We're reviewing stuff, so... I f- always feel that we discuss more than review, I feel, because I like review review is a difficult word because review makes you makes you think that especially when you read a review you think that everything in the review is true right or i do at least but then you have to That's question dangerous. it and you go and question it. it's like is that actually true and you work on it whereas when you discuss something like a, a piece of theater or a, or a movie you just you, you it's almost better than a review because you're not labeling something as what it is you're, you're talking about ideas that worked things that didn't maybe work you know you're right, but we end up with a good, bad, or just plain standard, so... Uh... True, again. <laughs> we should, we should uh, change the name of reviews to just opinions. Yeah. Opinion. Well, yes, and also, like, we're, we're reviewing things that we've seen in a way. Um, and also, I'm not saying don't ever review. Reviews are great. I just mean that be careful reading them. Or during a run, definitely. During a run, yeah. And also maybe when you're like, um, I was about to say a virgin. Well, maybe not a stage virgin, but like an industry virgin, mm-hmm. you know, like because um, it takes probably a long time for you to have read a review and then be able to go on stage and then be fine and be your same, like that's... Oh, tough. yeah, I read last year's reviews like two months ago, so... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no, exactly. But do it in your own time. Like, there's no there's We no asked rush. to get reviewed. And there's how many were there? I only thought... Two. 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 Yeah. Troika was reviewed. One, so... Yes. Troika was reviewed. But this is the problem with reviews as well, is that sometimes, as it's an opinion, it's reviewed in the way that we didn't... It didn't help us. <laughs> You yeah, know, it was like, the story is, it's like, well, we don't, like, that's not going to help me. I <laughs> like, feel like, like some of the reviews I read for other shows, I was reading it and um, as, as, a, as a member of the cast, a lot of the things that are said in reviews actually don't massively pertain to you. No. Mm-hmm. Reviews, I think, probably are something more that the director should maybe pay attention to. And because the reviewers will be reviewing the work that the actors do. So the director's kind of in a nice place. I mean, I, I'm sure they'll take it just as badly, but they're in a sort of nice place where and, and they might get they might get a bit of flack, but they have the, they have the chance to come in and sort of shift things around a little bit while still telling the same yeah. story. Right. So it's more the reviews are maybe for directors' feedback more than yeah. anything. Which is why what was good for us was maybe Mark and Nick coming in and giving us notes. Mm-hmm. Or, or, I mean, we had our own lighting tech, so he's because he was like doing his thesis and he was a drama oh, student yeah, as well. Yeah. We had three people that could give us feedback. Um, so that was more important than, yeah, reviews. So yeah. sometimes director's notes are a lot more. Um, you should put more attention to them than reviews, I think, if you're reading them, which I think you shouldn't. I agree. <laughs> In terms of thing that we are doing on this podcast, in, as far as I am concerned, it's kind of a, more like a kind of a gut feeling kind of thing. Because before last year, when we uh, learned about all about story structure and that kind of stuff, the only thing I had like kind of a compass was uh, how I loved the acting. Yeah, and uh, that pretty much was it. And also the fact that. Uh, as English is not my mother tongue, everyone I was looking um, at a movie in English, I learned something, language-wise or... But now that 
Yeah, that now that we are a bit more savvy on uh, how filmmaking works. Um, yeah, there are some coming movies that uh, that I didn't like that much. But, uh, <laughs> mm. I know why, and I'll explain why <laughs> in detail. Yeah. <laughs> I still need to listen to your one about Baby Driver. Yes. Oh, and you didn't we... want to listen to it because you haven't seen it, right? Was yeah. it you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. <laughs> well, not, bef- not before we end, actually. Uh, people have listened to the Baby Driver podcast. Yeah, you people know? are listening. So cheers for listening, you know. Yeah, thank That's you. That's a positive. Nice. That's a real positive. Nice. We expected like 10 people if that to listen. But yeah, no, we're, like we're approaching 100, 100 for episode one in a week. So, you know. That's pretty amazing. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I've nice. got to That's be good. careful with what I say because if we actually get to like 100 episodes, I have to release or redo the test. Yeah, now, now we have to be consistent as well. Every week. <laughs> Every week, yeah. <laughs> People annoy that we haven't released, so... Yeah, exactly. Excuse oh, Adam me. had a little guitar piece for us before we... Uh, <laughs> and a little story about the Fringe from last year. Should I do it? Yeah, I think All you right, should. I'll go and get it. <laughs> Who wants to set the story up for him? Yeah, and it can... You, and it, you can set the story up. What? So, um, is this the story about how he... Um, just totally left James out to dry right so <laughs> um, so as we have said maybe once or twice or three times um, we were at the fringe last year with a show that was political um, as well um, talking about refugees and Brexit obviously because it was all the talk of the town very um, topical very topical um, and so we did one scene where it was basically a song um, where Adam, Dick, and James. Kane. Kane. <laughs> um, were the lead guitarists, and they were basically playing uh, private school boys. We. It was our answer to Band Aid. The scene was exactly. that um, we'd made this song up to help the whole refugee crisis and bring awareness to it. Mm-hmm. But before we did the song. James had to introduce it as like a private school kid, but he just, for some reason this day, just couldn't really do it. Like he was going on too long and he was going on a tangent. It wasn't so a good day. I just give him the eyes and look at him and play this while uh, on stage in front of a, it was a pretty big audience that day, but uh, I just went. <laughs> And totally left him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was that just was a fun conversation. After, yeah, that was, that was a fun conversation after the show. So me and um, Laura Laura Watson were backstage because we were um, um, not in that number. We were not in that number, and we were in hysterics, like just behind clasped hands, like. Oh, it was beautiful. So the moral of the fringe is, it's going to be a tough ride, but you got to have fun. You've got to have you've fun. You've got to have fun. You know? yeah, live I in the moment. Live in the moment. It's for surviving, special. just go for it. Yeah. Live in the moment. Choose that's... to thrive, not survive. Boy, that's a good phrase. Great, great experience. Yes, and, uh, amazing. go see shows. Yeah, yes. definitely. As much as possible. Yeah, Craig Ferguson came back after 20 years. Oh, that's right. He was, here, he was there this yeah, year. I went yeah. there three times. I was supposed to go once. And then I noticed that he was getting people on stage, so I said, okay, I'll cancel the Naked Magicians and come back the next day. Amazing. I didn't get a chance to go see that. And then it didn't work because he took some Australians, and the last day there was Eddie Izzard as a surprise guest, so he didn't get anyone on stage. (laughs) That's incredible. I love Eddie Izzard. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's awesome. Not seen enough of him. To release the pressure, did you go see any improv? I did actually. Um, I went to see some of the guys that uh, supported ACS for our improv show way back. Oh yes, oh, way back ones. in there, way oh. back in the early days. The Improv Ninjas. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, oh, with um, um, the girl who did who was in in Utero. Judy Frary. Judy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. She is amazing. She she was yeah. brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely good. brilliant. Um, they were they were on point the night I went to see them. Uh, so they were doing they were doing something which I thought quite interesting. They were trying to build a story around suggestions from the audience. Uh, I think I think it's still early days, but some of the improv scenes they were coming up with were riotous, <laughs> like, like absolute smut at points. Then to just like 
So then just like stupid physical comedy, like somebody was standing behind somebody digging a grave and uh, he would just throw the sand on her and then she would go around the other side. So he's just like, why are you standing there? <laughs> and then just get her with the sand again. It was fantastic. That's beautiful. <laughs> Like I do, I do love improv comedy. I think that's something I'm going to try and get into uh, after after ACS. Yeah, because it, it's a riot. A skill. It's an it's absolute a skill. riot. Yeah, if you, if you start only with games, or well, there are two shows that I really like. There, there was the Improv Shakespeare. Uh, that would groups. be amazing. Oh, like oh my gosh. Ping pong, orange ping pong balls with the Shakespearean tropes on them, and they would send that in the in the public to. Oh, that's clever! That's it's, amazing. It was yeah, they mastered the language, so they, it was really nice. And the Doctor Who, uh, any suggestions, Doctor? You choose between uh, all the actors on stage who will be the Doctor and stuff. And very well done if you're a Woovian. I am so <laughs> much so. <laughs> Doctor Who. Okay. Uh, Is that our fringe experience done for this year? Yeah, I feel as exhausted as I did. <laughs> I feel like last I was on a three week run. Yeah. Yeah, I just would like to add one last thing then. Seance. Oh, I never got a chance to go to this. Yeah, one thing we're going to do here at uh, Milk in a Wine Glass, that's the company producing the podcast. Mm, trademark. Uh, is um, <laughs> is a 360 uh, degrees sound uh, short audio programs. Oh, yeah. What they had this year was called Seance. So it was a summer hall. There was a, a small courtyard in front with a maritime container. And inside that... You had, during 20 minutes, every 15 minutes, uh, a seance conducted. So it was, for 20 people, a long table with 10 people on each side. And it was pitch black with headphones on your head, because that's the easiest way to experience uh, that kind of sound. And for 15 minutes, it was just um, a seance going wrong. And uh, it was pretty... Well, I was a bit annoyed because that's, uh, I'm trying to do that kind of stuff right now. Technically, <laughs> we're also uh, recording the podcasts this way, actually. Uh, don't know if it's going to be released at any point in the future, maybe. But yeah, that was pretty impressive. And I sent uh, some, uh, some people to, to go listen to that. I, I'm, I'm gutted I never got the chance because you sent me along as well. But <laughs> such is life. They'll do it next year. It sounded amazing. Yes. Yeah, they'll do it next year. It'll be a Ouija yeah, board we'll next year. Yeah, we'll do it year. next year. Let's do it next Yes. <laughs> it will definitely be released at some point. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no pressure, so guys. I think we're good. We are. Aren't we? Yeah, we are indeed. <laughs> Thank Alistair for coming along. And Thank, you. Well, Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you very much yeah, for everyone. having me. It's been Thank a blast. You. Every, been you should come blast. again. Yeah. Well, Talk let me know. <laughs> I'll let you know when my schedule's free. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Pretty after, much after this year. Yeah. Basically. January. January. Yeah. We'll give you a call. So, uh, if it's in the evenings, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Weekends. Cool. Crack a dawn, kind of things like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you very much for having me, guys. It's been a pleasure. Well, same, Excellent. very same, very same. So yeah. this was uh, the good, the bad, and a just plain standard. Without that many good, bad, and just plain standard, yeah. actually. But the, the fringe, fringe is amazing. The fringe is in the, the fringe is in the good category. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> strongly yeah. good. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. only yeah. good, only mm-hmm. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this was Jan. I'm Anouk. And Adam. And Alistair. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>